Hello, good evening and welcome. Now, um, I've had an email um, after our first video. Uh, so this is especially for Russell, who asked me to continue with the quatrefoil theme uh, of baking. Um, so I thought I'd have another go with bread, because I, I'd come out here and my, um, my lovely sourdough yeast here has gone from about here right to the top and just started to go back. So I thought, you know what, I'll use it. I don't know if I've got enough, but we'll... we'll Give it a go. If we haven't, doesn't matter. We'll just leave it to prove a bit longer. So um, this time, what I'm going to try and do is a quatrefoil shaped tear and share loaf. Um, don't know if it's going to work, but it'll be a good experiment. So I've got 300 grams of uh, flour in here, to which we are going to uh, stick in about 168 uh, grams of water. Uh, measure on the jug there. Um, some salt, and oh, I've got fresh salt here which I haven't opened yet. There we go. It's supposed to be sort of five to 10 grams worth of salt. Can't be bothered to measure that. So we'll pop that in. I'm sure that will be absolutely beautiful. Um, then if we can, in the region of 150 grams of sour dough starter here. This is actually, yeah, that little juicy in there. It was bubbling, beautiful. I looked in it earlier on and it was just sort of like, makes this lovely crackling noise when you look in there. Probably won't want to tip it in here, but here we go. So we've got to try and get, without the lid flopping shut on me, which will be a mission. Let's take that lid off. So if I can get 150 grams, we shall see. Let's have a look how much I've got. Not 100, oh, I don't know, that's 105, 105. A little bit more in there. Don't want to use it all. 152 grams. Uh, I haven't left very much at the end, but hopefully we'll have enough there um, to keep the starter going uh, next time. So all that remains is for me to mix this up, get this into a dough, and we'll come back a little bit later on, rather than you watch me for 40 minutes and kneading. Okay, so, earlier on, we mixed up our sourdough, put it in the bowl, and I then popped it out in the sun to rise, and it didn't rise. It's kind of like it's sort of, uh, gets about the same size as it went in. We're not going to be this hard, though. we're going to carry on. We're just going to assume it's going to rise when it gets into the oven, I'm sure it will a bit later on. So what I'm trying to make um, for Russell is a, is a quatrefoil. This is a quatrefoil, so usually carved in stone or, or, or timber or something of that like. So a quatre for the four um, leaves uh, and cut in. So I thought, you know, I'll, I'll make a circular bread outside, cut the centres out and um, we'll see how it goes. Yes. But we're going to have a go, we're going to have a good old go. So here's my dough. Looking good. Now we're going to have to roll this um, flat, so we need a little bit of. That's surprisingly not sticky on the bottom. Um, so I think we'll put the sticky side down, otherwise we're never going to be able to roll it. It's pretty much like smacking a bottom there. Right. Um, so here we go. So I've kind of had a look at the side. That's springing back remarkably fast. This is a bit like a bit like making a pizza, really, isn't it? I get this feeling. As I cut this, actually, it might keep reducing it. What do they do when they make the pizzas? They sort of like, sort of spin them, don't they? Oh, Right, what we've got to do is see if we can, it's not too bad size-wise, get it into the, into the cloth. It's stuck. Let's get these shape. Stick on the cloth. Let's just pretend I've allowed the cloth. Won't stick on the cloth. 
So there we go, look at that, perfect, almost um, circular-ish. There we go. That's not going to work. Okay, we'll move on to that because I haven't got any other um, rolling pins. Make it nice and flat. Quite like doing that. Right, so, uh, looking at that pattern, we've got four cup, or four circular shapes coming in. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether these will. One, two, three, four. Yeah, the size is okay. Okay, let's go for it. One. Two. Really wanting to overlap a little bit. Two. <laughs> Apparently I said pastry earlier, but it's dough, not pastry. One, two. I'm an idiot. Three, aren't I? Squish that there a bit. One, two. What do you reckon about there and there? One, two, three. Take two. Pause. So we're back again. I've um, just squished it all back together. Be fine. Um, just, you know, get a bit of, never hurt anyone. So let's put a bit of flour down again and uh, roll our shape out. Oh, it's a great workout. This this should be uh, taken on by Joe Wicks. Actually, rolling dough. Um, some hair in it there. Just make it nice and circular. You didn't flower the cloche again. Oh, I didn't flower the cloche again. Oh. Oh, no. so, the beauty of a cloche shop is using cloches that's circular so you can get the, get the shape about right if you're extra distant from the edge. You're pretty much circular. Right, let's get this. So look at this, we're all a, we're all kind of a on grid. We've got to, uh, like that, and then if the cup is centralised, on each one of those, oh, the cup. so if the cup is centralised on each one of them, then we should be in about the right position. Okay, I don't feel we're we're too bad here. Yeah. Bit of a shape of a quarter full. Not quite as delicate as I sort of hoped it would be. Um, and I think what we might do is uh, let's use a smaller cup. Smaller cup. I found an egg in egg poaching. Oh, they make beautiful little cutters actually. So we'll get that roughly flat. Okay, it's looking very, very, um, very similar to the picture. I think what it's got is these quite some quite some nice little details there. So what we could do is we could create those little details. Roll them. That's not going to roll, is it? No. Um, okay. Let me just uh, let's make some buns. Actually, we've got quite a lot here, actually. That'll do. That'll do as our uh, sort of culture foil, I think. So what we'll do is pop that in the oven. Yes, it's the shelf's a little height. Now, before you go to put anything in the oven, check your oven shelf. Is the, <clears throat> is the right height? Is it right coming out of the way? There we go. Put that in there. Right, that's going to fall over. Ah, put that over there. That won't go there, but it will melt it. Let's put that on there for a minute. It's hot. Oh, I'm out of it all the I'm out of it. I need to have the oven, actually. Okay, right. Let's not do that. Okay, right. On to the last ones. 
um, I think what we do is like maybe we'll do a a plated French French loaf. Um, it's just a. Let's move that. Well, I can see. Uh, I can see a disaster happening. So we need to roll it all out, cut it into three individual lengths. And then we'll pat it. It's pretty little bit. Little, it's just gone in the water. It's feeling a little bit resistant to rolling at the moment. This is where flaring your worktop doesn't work brilliantly because it stops you rolling it. Oh shoot! <laughs> My fingers been in front. You want them? My fingers been in front of the camera. How many have you missed your wumble? <laughs> All of it. <laughs> I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. Oh. I found some thread. <laughs> That's honestly, uh, it seems to be picking up some interesting <coughs> bits from the surface. You know, I see them doing this sometimes in the um, in the shops, in the making of stuff. So we'll roll that into three shapes. I don't know, I'll squeeze it, I'll squeeze it into three shapes because it's not rolling. Just sliding across the surface, and it's a little bit resistant. So I'll get it into the, I'll get it into the, into the three laid shapes. And there we go. And then we can cut it into, bit, bit cut it into the three lengths. And one, two, three. There we go. And then we will plant them together. So you start off like this. Get your lengths out. Stay. There we go. Obviously, this is the way to to do it. Right. So um, the general the general rule with plating is we go one over there, one over there. I can't remember how to plait. How do I do that one? One over there. Over there, I think. One over there. Oh yeah, got it. One over there. One over there. One over here. One over here. One over here. And one over here. And that you'll be amazed at how much this will. It looks now a little bit iffy, but it will puff up quite nicely into a little French loaf. Got one here I made. One here I made the other day. Left it in for a bit long. So obviously we're just going to not do that this time. We're going to transfer it. Oh no, always remember, give your bread a little little slice. Got a little slice of slice. And we will get it yeah. into the oven. Okay, it's been in now for well, about an hour. Um, moral of this story is don't let your wife turn the oven on for you because we put it in, came back after 30 minutes and the oven was on at 160 as opposed to normally 240. So we've cranked the oven up, we've given it another half hour. Um, so hopefully we should be about right. Um, so obviously we get the cloche out in a minute but we'll get the uh, we'll get the French bread out first. I think we will be hopefully quite pleased. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Nicely cooked and nice consistency. Sounds it's hot. Sounds quite hot. But it's got a bit, little bit crunchy on top. Uh, obviously, that will be that will be okay later. I mean, we can toast it. It'll be fine. I wonder whether I should get the other one out. Because I think what we'll do is we'll we'll we'll, we'll have a look at the, the the cloche and see how it's getting on because we can always put it back in. Uh, Give it a little peaky. Ah, ah, stuck on the top. Ah. Okay, let's have a quick. Let's see how our quatrefoil is getting on. Dun, da, 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 da. Yeah, it needs a bit longer. Sort of like it's uh, this is a <laughs> What's funny? It's not funny! <laughs> Okay, well, it's going to be tomorrow before this is finished. <laughs> okay, ready for the big reveal. Apparently this wasn't 
as bad as I thought it was, the girls tasted it and they said, apart from the fact it was very salty, the consistency was very good and they enjoyed it. So anyway, we'll take it off the... Here we go, here we go. Let's go. This has got to be ready. It's been in like an hour and a half. And frankly, it's cost me so much in electricity. I've kind of double bought it. It's another, another success. Is that is that perfect or is that is that perfect? Look at that, the, the quatrefoil. I think we've got to say to Russell, you've got you've got it. There it is. Look at that, in indistinguishable. I'll send it to you in the post.